Are you tired of the Stafford Gambit? Then hopefully I've got the right line that you can play against it. Now the Stafford Gambit has been unbelievably popular in the last, the last few years, mostly due to uh, the efforts of, of Eric Rosen. So the Stafford Gambit uh, happens in the Petrov defense after e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, the Petrov defense or the Russian defense. Knight takes e5, and instead of the most common move here, d6, black plays knight to c6. So it gives up a pawn. But he has a pretty decent lead in development. And there are lots of tricks which uh, attract people to this line. And first, let's have a look at some of the tricks so we can understand you know, what black is trying to do and what we are trying to avoid. So first of all, when people see this line, they want a pawn, most people play d3 here, which might, might be the best move. e5 is also interesting. Uh, after d3, black plays bishop to c5, and now white has a choice. The most obvious trap is bishop g5, then they take on e4, earlier my queen, take on f2, and we have mate. And countless people have fallen for this at the lower levels. Many people see this and think, okay, I want to get the castle, play bishop b2. Bishop, and you play bishop b2. Uh, my black goes h5. And white castles. But now black continues the attack, knight on g4. And many people are tempted here to push the knight by going h3, but they're already facing some difficulties here after queen to d6. And now white has to find the only move, e5. Otherwise, white is just more or less lost. And you play e5, so you can take on g4 with a bishop and play rook e1. So already, you could be in a lot of trouble if you don't know what you're doing. You could also play, instead of castling, you could play c3. And this is probably a good line objectively for white, but even, even if you prepare this, you memorize this, you know, you, Black keeps on attacking, he plays queen h4, queen back, maybe you push f3, which might be the right move, they go h4, you're under tremendous pressure. You take on h3, sorry, on g3, rook takes h2, etc. So even if you go here and, and the computer likes white, we're up two pieces. Even if you get all the way here, you can lose in one move by playing what looks like a solid move, queen a4. Oh, I'm, I'm threatening this and I want to castle queenside. Then rook takes e2 and, and you're close to losing here. Bishop comes in, big problems. So this is not what we want to do. I mean, the Stafford is kind of a fringe line. We have one more, one more trap here. Uh, to d3, well, you can, you can go d3, d3, bishop, c5, and e5. You could also go e5 first, but if you go e5 here, it's just knight e4, and it's actually very good for black. So a lot of pitfalls, but I think you can avoid most of these pitfalls by playing a relatively computer-approved move here. The computer likes to move f3 here, and this sort of takes away all the tricks that they're preparing for. And I like this because it reminds me of the English opening, where you very often you try to play sort of, you know, behind these pawns. You try to get the pieces behind the pawns. And if, if you have everything, you know, connected, defended, it's very hard to break through for black here. And one problem he has is that he has lost a central pawn and traded the other one away from the center. So it's very hard for black to break in the center to open up your position. To do that, he will either need to sacrifice a piece or get a pawn break. But, you know, these pawns are a long way away from any pawn break. And this is the only pawn break we, we might have to worry about. What I also like is that now it's our turn to have some tricks up our cleave. So here, black actually doesn't have a ton of choices. Those who play this, they seem to be going for knight h5 here. You know, they want to keep attacking. But here I like the move queen to d2. And okay, most likely a Stafford Gamble player will play queen h4 here, it looks tempting. But we go king d1. And actually, black is facing some tricky situations here because we're threatening to play queen g5, which would force a queen trade. 
So H6 or Bishop B7 are actually reasonable moves here for black. Eric Rosen once had this and he played Bishop E7. But here is actually our first trick. If they play Knight C3, which looks tempting, here we can play Queen E1. And it's actually tricky what to do here for black. The only way to try and save the piece is Knight F5, but we can safely just take the piece. And there's not much in this for black. We just down a piece. We're happy. So that's sort of trick number one. Trick number two is after queen d2. Is if they play anything else, or almost anything else, let's say the castle, we play queen g5, which is a positional threat. Because we're hitting this, hitting this, and we're offering a queen trade. So they're kind of forced to accept the queen trade. And then we just hop a pawn and we'll play the position. And we're quite happy. But let's see queen h4 again, king d1. So we're playing this on principle, and what we want to do later, we just want to go c3, d4, and we're quite happy to get the king on c2. There are no black pieces, you know, attacking on the queen side. The king is quite safe there. We keep playing behind the pawn wall, and this you can play without memorizing much. You know, there's no, no the move, f3. One or two tricks, and then, but then you just play on principle. Get your pieces out behind the pawns, you know, protect the pawns, and avoid you know, the minimal tricks that, that Black has here. There's one game here, Eric Rosen played bishop b7, queen e1, offering a queen trade. But Black actually has to take it because of the queen f6. We see that the knight on the rim here is quite dim, and we have g4. So he has to go for the queen trade here, and then we just have, and we just have a pawn, and we're doing quite well. So if you want to avoid queen g5, maybe h6 is a move. But then we can just, you know, start pushing. g4 is also interesting. Might even be a better move. But usually we just go for the c3 stuff and push d4. And the only way really to do anything is to play f5. It's probably primitive to do it here because you'd have to sacrifice a piece. But this is the only way that black can sort of try to give you problems by sacrificing a piece. But well, we should be able to survive this. So I think this is, you know, there's not much to memorize. So I think this is an excellent way to avoid all those tricks and traps. Uh, and don't worry, you know, about putting your king here. There are many openings where you actually put your king there voluntarily. We can we take an example like an opening like d4, d6, c4, e5, takes, takes. I mean, black voluntarily puts the king on c7. It's safe on c7 in many openings. I think here in Stafford, it's, uh, it's very safe. And we are also avoiding all these tricks and traps that they have up their sleeve, and this will frustrate them. I think we'll get a good game, and we'll take down the Stafford.